Let's talk about the user structure in Cascade. So right now I'm under my profile in the lower left hand corner and I've gone up to admin organization. This is where all the different user structure exists. This is where you would go to do simple things like reset passwords or adjust your org chart in general. So on this page, you'll start on the user section and we're gonna come back to that. But first conceptually, let's just talk about at a high level how this all fits together. So from left to right, we're gonna go from a bigger record to more specific. So uh, org units are the biggest piece of the structure. These are going to be the different areas of your organization or departments or teams, however you choose to organize the different uh, pieces of your organization. So you'll see a lot of stuff in here like marketing and sales, human resources, mostly departments. Sometimes you'll see things like regions and stuff like that, depending on the scope. Um, but bottom line, these are the different areas of your organization and the top level org unit is always going to be your organization's name as a whole. So um, that's basically the starting point. From there, we go into roles. So given that we have these different areas of the organization, you'll see them listed here in this organization column. So marketing and sales, things like I just mentioned, the roles are the different jobs that fit into those org units. So you're going to see job titles, CEO, president, and so on. So these are the different types of responsibilities that exist in each org unit. So we still haven't talked about specific people yet. That's where users come in. So when I go to the users section, these are the different people who are filling those jobs in the org units. So the whole idea behind all of this is very key. So uh, technically all the different goals and access privileges, which we'll get to next, those are all of happening at the role level. So um, people can sometimes move around throughout an organization. They'll come and go, as you know. So the whole idea is when you are put into a role in Cascade, which is necessary to be able to log in, you would ad uh, basically adopt all the different responsibilities that are entailed there, AKA goals that are owned by that role. So the users are the specific people that get added in and get plugged into those roles. Finally, I already alluded to it, but privileges. So this is kind of funny, right? Technically, you could say, oh, we're not going completely left to right because these are plugged into the role level, but these are still the most granular piece of the structure. So um, when we look at the far right-hand side, you'll see strategy, privilege, organization, and system. So what exactly do those mean? Well, strategy privilege is going to give a role uh, full access to work with the strategy, including private goals and changing alignment, building directly on the planner, um, for any plan. So strategy privilege is meant for um, everybody who needs to have full responsibility over all the plans. Um, it's also just good if you're just starting out in a trial and, and you want everybody to get a feel for how things are uh, working in Cascade, right? Organization privilege is what gives you access to this page that we're on right now. Uh, so anybody who needs to operate the org chart, technically this is the most powerful access privilege because you could theoretically give yourself strategy privilege, right? And then finally, system privilege, which we're not going to go into the system uh, page right now, but just like the organization privilege, it'll give you access directly to the system page. And uh, without going there uh, in detail, that's where you'll set up single sign-on. That's where you'll have all the on and off switches for uh, ad hoc settings that Cascade has. So, and uh, where you'll set your status colors, things like that. So, um, works just like the organization privilege in that it just gives you to that name access, excuse me, to that named page. So uh, that's basically how all the records fit together. And um, when you're adding different uh, levels into here, uh, you'll want to add one uh, record at a time from left to right. Uh, if you're adding a, a new person to Cascade, you can just invite them um, at the top of the screen here with invite users. Uh, you can also do that in the navigation in the lower left. All you need to do is enter their email. So just as an example, when we enter an email, then we just call out, okay, who should they be reporting to in Cascade? Now you don't have to choose a person there, but um, ideally you do. And then that will automatically give them access to the system uh, with a general username, which is just their email and uh, a general role. So after you send those invitations, you'll be able to find that person's role here. Depending on whose manager you pick for them, they'll automatically fall into that manager's org unit. So marketing, sales, departments, you get the idea. But then you'll have to go in and manually change their role title. Uh, same goes for the uh, user section here. So um, if you want to go in and retroactively change their uh, actual name, 
they'll be able to do that themselves, but you can do that in the user section here as well for them. All right, so if you have any other questions about uh, user setup or anything like that, just let us know. The only other thing I would mention, and this is super important, is whenever you're looking to clean up your org chart, so you can look, use the org chart on the right here for anybody that has direct reports. If I go to the CEO, that person's at the top, obviously, you can collapse and look into the different uh, org chart pieces here. And if you ever find yourself wanting to clean that up or, or delete roles, be very, very careful to not delete roles where they own goals that you want to keep. Because what Cascade does, let's just say, for example, I want to delete this role. If I click X on the far right, I get this warning, and it's very important. When you delete a role, it's a permanent action. So Cascade says, if we're deleting this role, then all the responsibilities that this role has must also be totally irrelevant. So we're just going to hard delete that and take that out. Um, now we're going to change how that works. That's not how Cascade should behave long term. But in the meantime, make sure not to ignore this error, or I should say this warning. And you can shift goals in bulk away from a role that you want to delete by clicking this paper airplane icon just next to that X. So you can just select one or more goals and then shift them to a new person, and then you're good to go to delete that role. Now, just for what it's worth, there's no real benefit in deleting roles unless you just really want to have a clean org chart here. Um, as far as uh, limitations, there's no limit to the number of roles you can have. Uh, it, that's not important. So um, it, honestly, if it was me, I would probably just avoid deleting roles altogether unless, like I said, once in a while, you just want to clean up the org chart, but keep that in mind. So yes, if you have any other questions about managing users, just go down to your profile. You'll find a support chat option listed here. I don't have it because I'm an admin on our side, but we'll be able to speak with you directly and, and help you troubleshoot from there.